Falcons at the Eagles, Monday Night Football. Welcome to Props Parlays Today. I'm Andy from WagerTalk.com, being joined, as always, by my fellow prop master, Andrew McGinnis from WagerTalk.com. We're going to break down Monday Night Football from a props betting perspective. And, Andrew, let's just get right into it. Uh, we break down all of these uh, different categories, try and get you ready. Just make sure everyone understands these are not all bets that Andrew and I are betting on our own, our official plays that go on our record, uh, that, uh, that we take 100% responsibility for. Those are on wagertalk.com. We're trying to talk through all these props, maybe point you in the right direction, um, maybe give you some information or, or an opinion that you hadn't thought of before. But uh, this video is to really help you out with your own plays tonight. So let's talk passing yards here. Um Boy, fantasy nightmare, a fantasy football nightmare with A.J. Brown uh, just randomly <laughs> tweaking his hamstring. He's out. Surely this has got to affect the uh, passing yards props. And, yeah, Jalen Hurts comes in at 230 and a half. Um, that's a low number, but, man, without A.J. Brown, it does make sense. Kirk Cousins, second game, he's at 224, didn't even sniff this total. What do you think about some of these passing props in these two quarterbacks, Andrew? Yeah, Andy, great to be here with you as always. Uh, two props for me I'll look at. Um, you mentioned the injury, of course, to Brown, which is is huge. Uh, but of course, it could open up things for the receiving props. But uh, as far as the passing number here, Andy, I got to go with the under on completions. I'm a big completions guy. And uh, as you know, I like to take a lot of the more uglier uh, games and players with their overs. And sometimes with a player like this that's mobile, Likes to leave the pocket, can run. They've got a decent amount of great running backs here on this team. Of course, as we all know, they have no issue running the ball and a little bit of a dump off. Um, you know, some of these smaller plays, even just different style of runs that can create offense. And, and the way that these running backs are able to even avoid tackles or even create yards after contact. Um, I mean, we, we saw what they were able to do last week against my Packers, unfortunately. So under the completions for Jalen Hurts, he's gone under this uh, in three of his last 10 games. Or, or excuse me, he's hit this in only three of his last 10 games, the over. So under in seven of his last 10 games. And I feel like even if he has a decent game through the air, the best part about taking completions, Andy, is that one big throw doesn't mess you up at all. It just counts as one completion. So I really, really do like that. Uh, I do think they're going to be running the ball quite a bit. Um, the other one I like is Kirk Cousins over one and a half passing touchdowns. And I'll tell you what, we're getting a pretty nice number on this, a pretty nice price, uh, I should say here. And, and look, I think you and I spoke about this before and last week. Players coming off injuries, specifically quarterbacks coming off injuries heading into week one, didn't fare very well in week one. And didn't light the stat sheet up by any means. And I think you look at this opportunity for them here um, against the Eagles compared to a team like the Steelers they had to play last week that beat them without even scoring a touchdown. You've got an Eagles team that actually gave up a ton of yardage in 2023. They were near the bottom. And then they're off to kind of a tough start as Jordan Love uh, got a ton of yards on them. Uh, in week one on the Eagles. And I do think that passing touchdowns uh, is really the move here for Kirk Cousins. So despite the running back room here and this, the opportunities and the guys they have uh, for the Falcons, I think a lot of those running backs can also be pass catchers, which helps us out a lot more with looking for these passing touchdowns. You got to love that price. The plus 140 you can see there on the screen. Uh, and, and obviously going back to last season for Kirk Cousins, he's hit this in eight, of his last 10 games, a guy that loves to go back in the pocket. Uh, not a very mobile guy. We don't have to worry about this guy running in many touchdowns and taking us away from these passing touchdowns. So I'll take Kirk Cousins over one and a half passing touchdowns. Um, I like it. I was looking at uh, Kirk Cousins under 33 and a half pass attempts. You know, last week he did look terrible and I was still, I'm still kicking myself for not taking his under rushing. They were playing the Steelers who it, Steelers are now it's it's obvious when TJ Watts healthy they're just one of the elite defenses in the league so I'm on the fence about you know was it the matchup for Cousins or was it that he really is that immobile coming off the injury um you know hasn't you know hadn't played all he was only 16 of 26 and I'm looking at this Philly team and you can move the ball on them um but I think you can move it through the air and on the ground I mean you got Bijan and Tyler Algier, listen, those two guys 
combined to rush for four yards of carry against Pittsburgh. And that's not terrible. Um, I, if, if you could do that against Pittsburgh, I think you could do that against Philly. I think this could be a rushing attack, especially if Atlanta watched Kirk Cousins was like, man, we got some real problems. He's, he's not mobile uh, in the pocket. We got to keep the pressure off of him. Um, so I, I think this 33 and a half, this is asking a lot to go from 26 pass attempts uh, all the way up to 34. I mean, you're talking about eight more uh, pass attempts here. Um, so I, I was looking at that. I can't say it's the most confident play in the world, but it just, I, I, I don't know what they're basing that 33 and a half number off of. Like if I'm Atlanta, I'm really wanting to try and, you know, work the clock and get the running backs going that way. You don't have to face Jalen Hurst in the offense, but 33 and a half just seems a bit, a bit high on that one. So uh, for sure, I would take a look at that one. Let's take a look at rushing props real quick. If you guys could just hit the like button really helps us out, helps the algorithm out. And uh, the word of the day, Andrew and I decided uh, if you, if you don't, we, we always ask for a comment, but then it's like, well, how many people have this awesome hot take you can leave in the comment section. So we just asked you type a word into the comment section. It helps us out. So Andrew decided the word of the day is going to be blitz in honor of Caleb Williams and the bears not being able to pick one up last night. So we are, if you could just type the word blitz in the comment section, that would help us out. We always like seeing what you guys are thinking and uh, responding to the comment section. So uh, boy, that, that game might've taken a few games off of the end of Caleb Williams career. Good Lord. Uh, it's a shame. Some, it's block a shame. somebody. <laughs> your num- I'm all for it's- good defense, but when there's no good offense, it's kind of rough, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's your number one pick. It's your franchise guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> someone tell him to throw the ball away. Get him. I, he wasn't just get, barely getting tackled by his shoelaces, Andrew. These were like full blown WWE moves uh, <laughs> being put on him. So, all right, let's take but a Andy, look. I'm watching that and I'm thinking to myself, shame on me, prime time rookie quarterback for not betting the INT prop. And I used to tell you all the time, that was one prop I just, I don't know, I can't get behind all the time. But after he threw the first one, I was like, oh, I think another one might be coming. And then, of course, it's it's not even close. Yeah. Let's take a look at the rushing yards here. You got Bijan at 64. Jalen Hurts at 40 and a half. The books are telling you he is going to run, run, run here. Kenneth Gainwell, 10 and a half. Saquon, 76 and a half. My guy, Tyler Algier, 20 and a half. He had 21 uh, uh, yards last week. What do you think about this one? Yeah, Andy, I like uh, I like Algier uh, over his number here. I just think he's going to get a lot of opportunities. And I think a big reason for that being is that, uh, like I mentioned, uh, the Falcons have quarter, have running backs that uh, can be in the passing game as well. And Bijan Robinson, of course, is one of the main guys I will talk about with that. Uh, and I think Algier is more so a guy you want to look towards for his attempts and or even his rushing yards when the number is this low um, because he's going to get those opportunities. And one thing I like about the Falcons is that they certainly spread the ball around a little bit. He's going to um, get the carries here. Uh, you take a look at some of his attempts he's had here. Last week's game was a little bit different just based off Pittsburgh's defense. But before that, you know, we were seeing pretty much close to you know, eight, nine or 10, a lot of games that he played in. And you're seeing the number here at 20 and a half, Andy. I think if he gets even, you know, six or seven uh, opportunities, I feel like he can capitalize and and go over his number here. Uh, For Jalen Hurts, I'm kind of interested in, in taking the over here. And I think it honestly correlates. If I'm going to take his past completions under, I feel like it kind of leads me to thinking that the quarterback himself is going to be running a little bit. So yeah, that number might be intimidating for some quarterbacks, but not Jalen Hurts. I think he will get out on the run, Andy. So I'll take Jalen Hurts over his number uh, for the Eagles. So we're in agreement on Tyler Algier. You know, he he only had three carries, but he did have 21 uh, yards. He had a 13-yard run, so he gets over that. I just just think the Steelers' defense, you just have to give a lot of respect to and just say, Mm -hmm. When you're looking at stats against the Steelers, it kind of has a little asterisk by it because they're just going to be the better defense than the team is probably playing, you know, this week. So I'm with you that Algier at 20 and a half certainly had my attention. Um, We've seen the Falcon. Now, I know it's different coaching staff, everything, but we've seen the Falcons kind of be a little bit worried about giving too much work to Bijan. And the fact is Bijan had 18 carries. Uh, last week and five five receptions. Um, so I, I think I think you're right. I think Tyler Algier gets in the mix, and you're so right. He only had three carries last week. If he gets that seven or eight, I I, I think he he could fly 
over that one. Uh, no pun intended. People talk about Why? overreaction week as far as sides and totals. How about overreaction week for props, right? You know, yeah. someone can comment and say, wow, he only had three attempts. What are these guys thinking? Well, <laughs> it's one game and it was against Steelers, right? A little bit different here. Yeah. And listen, Mike Evans was a huge, like, week one and then completely different. Jerome Brown, he burned me. He was, you know, he was a huge part of the, I think he, I think he caught one pass um, yesterday. So yeah, the, the big difference from week one to week two can be massive. So uh, I, I was, uh, you mentioned Jalen Hurts. I was looking at over nine and a half rush attempts. Now I think he had 13 last week and now no AJ Brown. Um, you know, the, AJ Brown's stat line last week was he had five catches for 119 yards and a touchdown. But the big thing is 10 targets. 10 plays they ran last week went to A.J. Brown. So those are going to go, you know, somewhere. And you look at what uh, look at what they did on the rushing ground. Barkley, uh, 24 carries. Jalen Hurts, 13 carries. Gainwell gets one carry. So they rushed the ball 38 times. Now, A.J., you as a Packers fan know Green Bay is always – I don't know why they can't figure out their rush defense. It seems like they're always giving up big, big rushing games. But Jalen Hurts rushed 13 times last week. We get a couple yeah. tush pushes. Um, you know, we get a, cu- a couple of scrambles. I'm with you that I like an over on Jalen Hurts rushing prop. I had kind of focused on the rush attempts. Um, I think he did it eight times last year over this total. But remember, towards the end of the year, he was hurt. He was hobbling around. So um, nine and a half seems a little bit too low for me. So I would lean over um, on that on uh, on that one. Um, Saquon Barkley, 75 and a half. Boy, you're, I mean. It was 66 and a half. He gets the big game and then the, you know, the books bump it up 10, 11 yards. I'm always scared to go to a guy when the books make that big of an adjustment, when they bump it from 66 and a half to 75 and a half. That's just a, that's a massive one. And the Packers running defense, man, is something that, you know, is again, if we're going to talk about the Steelers and giving them credit, we have to discredit the (laughs) Packers run defense, right? And a lot of guys on the ground have great days against them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and that, that does make our job a little bit tough. You're like, well, what defenses are good and what defense are bad? Which ones are banged up? I Listen, I thought the Colts defense, I thought their weakness was going to be their secondary. And now it turns out we can't stop the run at all. <laughs> at, like not even close. So, um, yeah, it sometimes it takes a couple weeks for us to get uh, figure figure these out. So, all right, those are your rushing props. Uh, it is Monday Night Football. Andrew, I know you got a best bet going on there. Tell everyone what you have up at wagertalk.com. We got a 5% uh, big bet, a big prop play. It is a prop play here for the primetime game tonight. Cashed the one on Thursday on Shakir in the first half. I'm not saying tonight's play will be as easy, but I really do like this angle here. This is one I had my eye on all week long. And guys, I have a coupon code AM39. AM39 will get you three days for the price of one, $39. Um, so the first play, or this play tonight, is 35 bucks. The entire next three days of all sports for me, 39 bucks. So if you guys want to join me tonight, looking forward to it. I uh, can't promise it'll be as easy as the last 5% NFL, but uh, hopefully we can cash this one, get to the window. And guys, make sure you get it as fast as you can so you can get the best number possible. How about yourself, Andy? What's going on for you this week? Um, So, y- listen, full disclosure, we hit a 4% best bet on Thursday Night Football. I'm feeling great. And then uh, we just – we were terrible. We lost three small bets on the in the NFL on Sunday, and it was just – it was just one of those days that just felt doomed from the very beginning. Um, I laid off the props I didn't put in that I liked. Like, I, I don't like having a ton of plays up and it burned me because the plays I put in were, were terrible. And then the plays that I didn't put in like Malik neighbors over his receiver. We talked about it. The freaking injury yeah. earlier in the week really tripped me up. I couldn't wait to put in neighbors over his receiving against a bad secondary. And then he pops up on the injury report. Me trying to play cautious, you know, it really burned me. Um, so, you know, there are Kyle use check over his receiving. I don't know why I didn't put that one in. Um, but uh, yeah, yesterday was yesterday was rough in the NFL. Um, and uh, it really sucks because, you know, you enjoy watching NFL until you're <laughs> until you're not yeah, winning. It's fun <laughs> until it's not. It's yeah, fun Thursday until... was Thursday was great. I, I'm with you. I had James Cook over his rushing he hit in the first half. That's the most fun you'll ever have watching Thursday night football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's all part of the process of getting here. You're not going to win every single weekend, but uh, we'll we'll have a small play up uh, for Monday night football. There's one play that 
I really, really like. So we'll get back to we'll get back to our our winning ways. Um, let's take a look at some of the receiving props here. This was uh, this was pretty interesting here. What do we do with receiving props when we have no AJ Brown? Um, I got to be honest. The the very first guy I looked at was Dallas Goddard. I feel like Dallas Goddard's kind of the guy that might get a couple of extra targets. Um, he had four catches for 31 yards last week. So now they're wanting him to get over 43 and a half. That was the very first one that I went to, but I feel like the books, um, the books are all over it. Devontae Smith, 72 and a half, got her at 43 and a half. So they're not giving you, uh, they're not giving you any deals, any receiving props, jump out, the, uh, jump off the board for you. Yeah. No AJ Brown. Um, the last time that AJ Brown was out of the lineup, Devonta Smith had 148 yards. He had uh, 12 targets and eight receptions. But a lot of the other times that he's been in the lineup and AJ Brown has not been, hasn't fared very well. So I'll tell people, be careful because it's not one of those things when you just immediately say, you know, Andy pointing out Dallas Goddard. It's not one of those things where you just immediately jump on the other receiver and think he's bound for a big day just because this guy is out. But those 12 targets, that's something worth looking at. I mean, we just talked about a 20 and a half completion prop for the quarterback. And we're talking about a guy that got 12 targets the last time in eight receptions, the last time that AJ Brown was out. So that one kind of interests me a little bit. Um, I almost am more tempted Andy to look towards the Smith reception prop than I am as far as his yards. It could be one of those things where you kind of fall into the, you know, the trap with this guy's out. He's going to have to have a huge day, 148 last time. And then you look at the receptions prop and you're like, yeah, it's a little bit juicy at the 140, but he could easily get six receptions and not fly over his number. Um, I agree with you that that Goddard could be the guy to step up a little bit. Um, with tight ends, I feel like usually, you know, other players, you kind of worry about injuries because he did get a little banged up in week one. If they tell us he's good to go, you know what? I believe them that the, he's good to go. If a tight end is good, they're going to fight through it. They're strong guys. They can make it work. Um, but you know what? We talked about Saquon with the rushing, Andy. And although I'm I'm kind of leaning towards some unders for, for the passing game there for Jalen Hurts, I think Saquon in the receiving game is a really good look here for this game um, tonight. You know, you look at kind of what he was able to do against the Packers. He didn't fly over his receiving number by any means, but I was really impressed. And again, you look at the Packers and their rushing defense over the last few years, Nothing to write home about. So yeah, Saquon had an unbelievable debut uh, in a in an Eagles uniform, but I think that his receiving game is really important, and they haven't really had that that much. I don't think this uh, Eagles team, as far as you know, running backs being able to catch a two yard pass and explode for fifteen yards. You look at the number that he has right now; it's it, it's pretty good. You know, when when you got a guy in the late teens and the early twenties uh, for their yards and they're as explosive as Saquon Barkley. And let's not forget, we talk about overreaction week with sides totals. The overreaction week for this prop uh, or for this player is going to be his rushing. Oh my God, Saquon, look at what he's going to be able to do with the Eagles. The Eagles team is back. They're going to go deep. Well, I would not be surprised to see Jalen Hurts dumping it off to him a handful of times uh, tonight. We can make some money on his receiving or his receptions prop. Are we, are, we, are we just Drake London? I feel like I would be a wealthy man if I would have just faded Drake London since he came into the league. And I know we got different situations and a different, you know, different coaching staff and a different quarterback. But and and yes, it was the Steelers, uh, you know, the Steelers defense. But okay, Drake London, like everyone drafted you pretty high in, in fantasy leagues. We're expecting big things. And two catches for 15 yards, um, and he only had three targets. And what's interesting, his receptions is four and a half, and it's it's juiced to the over. He had, he didn't even have five targets last week, let alone catches. Um, <laughs> and if 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 we, if we like this to be a running game, if we think Atlanta is going to try and protect Cousins a little bit more, um, I getting five catches when Kirk Cousins completed 16. Last week, like, okay, what is, is he going to complete 20 this week? But a fourth of them are going to go to Drake London. I, I don't know, man. I, I'm really, this is one of those lines where I'm really confused why it's juiced to the over. And maybe it's because the books know everyone wants to take 
overs um, on props, but man, under four and a half at plus one ten. That that certainly has my attention. Um, on the flip, yeah, on the flip side, it's juicy to the over. But Ray Ray McLeod, seven targets last week. Uh, if he gets seven targets again, he's absolutely flying over that one. But do you really want to trust Ray Ray McLeod? Um, I'm not really sure that I do. So um, some of these are some of these are, are are really really interesting. And you're right about Devonta Smith. He listen, Devonta Smith went over this last week with AJ Brown. So mm. you know, and this was not a, a the. Let me go through the catches here real quick so you can kind of understand how targeted uh, the 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 certain the big guys were on the Eagles. This wasn't a big game where he threw to a bunch of different people. Jalen Hurts completed 20 passes, five went to A.J. Brown, seven went to Devonta Smith, and four went to Dallas Goddard. There's 16 of your 20 completions went to those three guys, and now one of those guys is out of there. Like, John Dotson, surely he's not going to have zero catches. Um, but I think this this wide receiver core is pretty limited for Philly. So Devontae Smith over is probably going to be a big, big time public play. But I, I can't say I disagree with it when he's going over, you know, when A.J. Brown is in there. Now, maybe they have a lot more coverage that goes to De- uh, Devontae Smith without A.J. Brown. But it's a it's a big number. I can't tell you I like the under on it. Like, no way. This is this yeah. is one that this is one that imagine Philly gets a ball in a two minute drill and he just catches three passes. Like that's what I mean, Andy. The receptions might be the move over the yards. Like I feel like it's gonna be less sweaty to play his receptions than it really is to to watch. I think he'll need to have a one big ish play to get you over the yards and make you feel comfortable. And real quick, you mentioned London. Uh, I, I just want to say I pulled him up uh, um, on some sites here while you were mentioning him. I think the big issue with him, number one, is longest reception. The guy does not have any, like you're going through all his games. Most guys that are known to be as highly ranked as he are, he is, you'll see at least one like 30 or 40, like at least one decent breakout. There's nothing there really. I mean, you're you're talking about eight against Pittsburgh, 21, 22, 19, 13, 8, 18. Like if you have the stature and the hype surrounding a player like he does, your longest reception should not be 21 and a half like we're seeing on the screen. You know, and 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 here's the thing. And I understand other good players have that number too. So I don't get me fooled. I understand other players have that. But for him, it's when you look at all his track record, he's never flown over it. Like if this guy is going over 21 and a half tonight, guys, he's going to get a 24 yard catch, you know, 26 yard. He's not going to surprise you with a 30. And the number two I was going to say is yards after catch. Usually when he catches it, he pulls the Tyler Lockett. He takes himself down. He he tackles himself or someone gets him. He is not someone that's going to catch the ball and break out for more. So you have to pretty much think if if I said to you, yeah, uh, he he just caught a ball for 25 yards. You should probably know that he total yards receiving there 25. You know, he's not really going much farther after he catches the ball, it seems like. Yeah, I just the, the the Drake London hype has just not, you know, come to fruition. And now he's his quarterback is older, like his quarterbacks past were inaccurate. Now he's got an older quarterback coming off of a massive injury who's not mobile, who can't buy himself time in the pocket. So the ball's got to be coming out pretty quick. Maybe Cousins has a little bit more time against Philly. But yeah, I'm with you. This the, the Drake London. Yeah, I mean, listen, hindsight's 2020. I get it. But man, yeah. man, if you just took unders on Drake London, you would just be. You wouldn't have to bet anything else. You really, truly <laughs> wouldn't. So um, let's see. Uh, touchdown scores. I saw that. I mean, they're, they're Saquon's like the new Derrick Henry or the current Derrick Henry, just like or the Christian McCaffrey, like minus 190 to score a touchdown. Um, then it falls off a cliff here. Bijan at minus 120. Jalen Hurts at minus 105. And now you're into the plus monies with Devonta Smith, Goddard, Drake London, Pitts, Dotson, Algier. Any of these jump off the page to you? I like the number on Algier, Andy. I think, you know, if I'm going to like him for rushing attempts, like him to get involved in the rushing game, like I mentioned, I think I think Bijan, um, he's kind of a split guy. You know, he's a dual threat. He'll run the ball as well, but he's also going to be that guy that if you take his running prop, it's going to bother you if he catches a two-yard pass next to him and then runs it that way. Um, so I think that, you know, Algier is a guy that could be along the goal line. They choose to go to him. And it's so nice... 
in comparison to some other teams in the league, and I will include, of course, the Eagles in this conversation, when you know that a quarterback like Kirk Cousins is probably not putting himself at the bottom of a pile of 20 people lying on him. <laughs> no, I don't think not. he's I don't think no he's risking push. that. <laughs> no, no he's push. not risking that. So when you look at the list, like, don't you think the Algier number should be a little bit lower because there's not a chance that Kirk Cousins is going to be a guy contributing? So I think you look at what Bijan is at minus 120, and then you go up to Algier at plus 310. That, to me, is kind of a go number there on that one. And then you got to give an honorable shout out to the tight ends. I think one of these tight ends is going to get in tonight. Uh, you mentioned Goddard. I think he could he could find the end zone. Big target. And um, Pitts, Pitts, to me, is a guy that like doesn't get a target for the whole like 40-yard drive. And then when he gets to the red zone, he's like the guy they're looking for. So uh, I truthfully believe you could take both of those guys. And if one of them hits, you make money. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting with that AJ, AJ Brown. That really takes away their ability to stretch the field. So I think these drives for Philly are probably going to be you know, a lot of running, a lot of dink and dunk. And when they get in there, they don't have that huge body. So you're right. Goddard is up there. This Jalen Hurts at minus 105 certainly has my attention. They almost had a tush push touchdown, but uh, they fumbled the, the snap. So I would think that they would be working on that. I don't think their takeaway would be like, well, we can't do that play anymore since we fumbled the snap. <laughs> they, were t- <laughs> they were tired of the tush push. <laughs> <laughs> because of one play. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, I, listen, there's going to be some touchdowns tonight. So Devonta Smith at plus 130, all things considered, is probably the best one. If you think he's going to be the guy getting the most targets then at plus money is, is probably pretty good. But I'm not sure it's, it's it's great value. I do love the Tyler Algier plus 310. Um, goes, I, I had him last year to score a touchdown, and was it Desmond Ritter? They got on the one-yard line. Desmond Ritter fumbled the ball when Algier was only back. So it was like we knew Algier was going to get the ball, and he fumbled it. Then they get back down to the one yard lane later, and Desmond Ritter does it again. So I, yeah, I, <laughs> so I lost a bet on Desmond Ritter who could not handle the snap on the one yard line. So, all right, uh, I think that's going to do it for the props. When to talk about uh, some things, things that maybe we can react to or that we might overreact to, Andrew. Um, let's start with some of the big injuries. We got Tua. Uh, we got Tua who's out. Are you just staying away from the Dolphins completely, or do you think there might be some real value on Tyree Kill now that he's not there? Maybe we get a discount on his uh, on his numbers. Uh, what, what's your takeaway on what we do with the Dolphins, or is it just stay away? You know, I think I actually Waddle's the guy. I, I think that Hill is going to be affected the most. You know, I, people talk about the accuracy of Tua. I know it was a rough performance in that game that he got injured a little bit, but Andy, some of those plays that like he absolutely airs it out to Tyreek Hill. I, I'm honestly questioning. I'm like, this, did he know he was there? Like, he looked like he just backed up and, and launched it down the field. Obviously, he knew he was there. They have the plan. Tyreek is always where he should be, for the most part. But Waddle runs different routes. He's kind of more cutting in and around, in, inside, a little more zigzag. I feel like with Tyreek, it's more just go. It's like, use your speed, beat the guy, and I'm going to put it right where you need me to put it. Um, not saying that he doesn't cut inside a little bit, but Waddle, to me, is the guy you can count on to come back a little bit if you're in trouble, to catch those shorter passes. Uh, so I think he might benefit. I think Tyreek Hill fantasy owners, and I have him in one of my leagues, are actually going to be a little more upset than Waddle uh, fantasy owners based on that. Um, the bills, I, I, I played James cook last week. I, I went into the season thinking this would be a really nice James cook season. They seem to unlock him. Um, they just got to trust him with the ball. He has a huge game. Um, yeah, I think he's a play on, uh, moving forward. I know the numbers are probably going to be pretty big, but man, he just seems like the best offensive player besides Allen, uh, on that one. So, uh, saints and Cowboys, uh, the absolute wasteland that is the Dallas Cowboys backfield. Good <laughs> Lord. Elliot's averaging 2.7 yards per carry. Rico Dowdle got seven carries. Deuce Vaughn gets four. Car- it, it, to me, it's just unders galore <laughs> on Dallas. And then uh, New Orleans, I feel like Rashid Shahid is the anti Drake London. Like every time Rashid Shahid catches a ball, he's like wide open, forty yards down the field, like ready there. Like he's cashed his longest reception easily in the first couple of weeks. Um, I, I guess. I guess one thing I would caution people is um, Derek Carr getting a bunch of like publicity and how awesome he is. Uh, he completed eleven passes yesterday 
let's not let's, let's not anoint him uh the next the next Tom Brady. It's, it's crazy to think that though if you look at the score like that it's pretty insane like let's not act like 44 points on 11 passes isn't it pretty insane <laughs> it is but it's also he didn't like it wasn't it wasn't yeah it was a little deceiving if you're looking at Derek Carr I don't know I can't get a good read on that Saints uh the Buccaneers and Lions uh Baker Baker moneymaker broke my heart yesterday I had him over one and a half touchdown passes he gets one, then they get deep down inside, like around the twelve yard line. And what does he do? Tucks the ball and runs uh, for a touchdown instead of th- instead of throwing it. Um, Rashad White. I think we might have to really start looking hard about unders on his rushing totals. He was abysmal against a good rush defense. He had ten carries yeah. for eighteen yards. He's just not. He's a great pass catcher, but he really doesn't have a lot of value as an actual runner of the ball. I think Bucky Irving maybe starts taking over some more, um, some more uh, in, in, in that backfield. Um, And then uh, what's happened to Sam Laporta? Is he, is he still on the team? I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know what is going on. Jared Goff threw the ball 55 times yesterday and Sam Laporta had two catches for 13 yards. I would never would have ever thought you would see that stat line outside of an injury. Uh, what do you got takeaways, Buccaneers, Lions, anything anything groundbreaking? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, there were a lot of people saying that he was overhyped last year based on usage in the red zone and touchdowns. And I was like, ah, I don't know. He's still going to be a guy that can catch the ball. Well, um, maybe there's too many cooks in the kitchen. I don't Maybe he's not the guy they're looking for. I don't know. I'm confused by that, Andy. That was... That was what I had the over in that game. And if you look at the final score, you might think, Andrew, don't you dare call that a bad beat. It's not not even close. Uh, but I was like, man, this game had so many opportunities, especially the Lions. What were they like one for seven? I mean, in the red zone. I mean, they had so many trips, two interceptions. That was tough um, to look at. But uh, yeah, you know, I have to think that you, I was going to say, and I know it might sound like I'm overreacting, Goff attempts might be a good play, Andy. This team might be a passing team. Their pass defense is not very good. They're giving up points. You know, it's a shame you had uh, the passing touchdowns for Baker. I had his passing yards. So they were able to put up that many points without, and I honestly think a lot of that for both of us was because the Lions didn't do much on their own end. You know, if that game is more competitive, if Goff doesn't turn the ball over twice, um, I, I think this Lions defense... The Lions are a good team lately, and you look, look go back to last year. Of course, their offense makes up for their defense in some games, and I feel like everyone hyped up their defense when their offense wasn't good. Something tells me now that their offense got better, their defense is kind of slipping a little bit. So, something worth mentioning. You know, I I, I got to mention this this Raiders team. We're getting a lot of hype about these uh, teams that knocked out the survivor, the big ones. Of course, the Cowboys knocked out, the Ravens knocked out some of these teams here. Um, Brock Bowers, is he someone that we got to talk about? I mean, I feel like he's not getting enough hype. I really don't think he's getting enough hype here. Nine receptions, 98 yards, average 11 yards per reception. Adams with 110 yards. Uh, But the big story here was that Garner Minshew, do you know what his passing yard number was yesterday, Andy? It was pretty much 200. He blew through it, didn't he, huh? Yeah, 276. 270. Wow. I mean, it's pretty much 200. Um, yeah, that was a 1% play for me uh, on on his attempts. And I had his, and I also had his yards in a free play. Like, that to me is, is ridiculous. And this to me is a team that, it, you know, you often find yourself looking at a team and saying, run the ball, establish the run. This team's going to find themselves in positions in a lot of games. They're not going to be able to run the ball. No Josh Jacobs anymore. Zamir White is your number one guy. I'm sorry. He's like an eighth round uh, NFL fantasy draft guy. He's he's not they leading your team in rushing. This is yeah. going to be a receptions type team, I think, Andy. Yeah, they can't even come close to running the ball. They average, they average 1.6 yards per carry in a win. Uh, so you're right. Uh <laughs> A couple of defensive units that I think we probably need to target moving forward. The Ravens just aren't the Ravens that we know and love. You can just move the ball on them. Um, The Colts defense is really bad against the run. I, I thought that it was going to be their secondary. That was terrible, but quarterbacks don't even really need to throw the ball. I mean, 53 carries for 261 yards. That's like a college football blowout style. That's not NFL. Um, So, so for them to let Malik Willis uh, do that to them um, is very, very alarming. And on top of that, we have a bunch of injuries in the secondary, uh, but the Colts 
rushing game, you're going to need to look at playing running backs over the rushing yards when you play the Colts. Um, and oh, the 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 Washington has to be the worst secondary um, in the league. You're, we can make a lot of money fading the Washington secondary with you know taking the number one wide receiver on the opposing team. Um, I don't, I can't remember what Daniel Jones's uh, actual passing number was, but ten catches for neighbors, 127 yards, and a touchdown. Um, they even ran the ball pretty good. This Washington defense is just, it's just a mess. So fading those defensive units, I think are going to be really good. There was one more secondary. Well, the, the Giants don't have a very good secondary either, but Jaden Daniels can't really throw the ball. Who was the other secondary uh, that looks really bad? Oh, well, the the, the Panthers. Pan- like, yeah, of like, course. Uh, like, Do- Dobbins and Gus Edwards <laughs> rushed the ball for 35 times combined for damn near 200 yards. Um this is a Panthers team that just is awful. And I, I I said take Chuba Hubbard under his rushing total. He went over. He busted a 23-yard. But this this Carolina team, they can't – the big thing for the, the the Panthers in these props is they can't hold the ball. They, they've had 23 minutes in both – they haven't gotten over 24 yeah. minutes in each of the first – so you got – an offense that can't move the ball, a defense that a has to be getting tired at the end in the second half of these games. Cause they're on the field for so much and they have to be getting really deflated. Um, so I think there's re- like the breaking news. The Panthers aren't good, but I think taking advantage of some of these, these rushing props like Dobbins over, that was probably my biggest regret. Dobbins is rushing totals like 62 and a half or something. It was like, of course he was going to run all over the Panthers. So, yeah, the Panthers, there's probably some way to play them uh, when we get the player props um, that come out. So uh, any other takeaways, uh, players that you were noticing? Just two more. I was going to say, um, overall, what's going on with Jacksonville, Andy? Uh, I, I thought I sometimes these days on Twitter, you don't know what's real or what's not real. And I saw a, a video posted on X and it was the caption was, we suck right now. We have to change that. And I thought it was going to be a joke. But Trevor Lawrence actually said that about his offense. Um, I do question a lot of the coaching over there in Jacksonville. Honestly, the mistakes that they make and kind of the moves that they make confuse me a little bit. But I'll tell you, until they figure that out, the running backs, whether it's taking their rushing plus receiving, whether it's taking them to just catch balls out of the backfield or whether it's to take their rushing attempts, that's all I'm focused on. Because you want to talk about, I mean, we're talking about Carolina with how many minutes they've held on the ball. Well, how about Jacksonville? That's supposed to be a hell of a lot better than Carolina. Their time of possession is ridiculous. This team, I mean, they had that one nice play to Robinson, I think it was, for like, what, 60 yards, and they end up scoring a touchdown on that drive. Who cares if you can't get the ball and march the field? Sometimes I think it's good to be able to march the field and take forever. You look at the Chiefs, the year they lost Tyreek Hill. They were a team that was a time of possession team. But when they had Tyreek Hill... They were actually near the bottom in time and possession, and they were a number one team in the league because they were just getting and up the field and scoring so fast. So to me, that was a little bit weird. And uh, you know what? A meeting that no one's really talking about, a matchup, and also teams that no one's really talking about right now, the Seahawks and Pats. Um, yeah, tough night for me. I made a fantasy lineup on DraftKings, and I had <laughs> I, I thought there was value on Lockett yesterday. <laughs> 15 <laughs> yards for him, and then uh, Smith and Jigba and Metcalf both drop 100 pieces <laughs> on the uh, the Patriots. That one was rough. Um, but, you know, the Geno Smith completions prop is back, and it's better than ever. You guys <laughs> that follow me, and you know I like completion betting. I know that there was a 56-yard pass to DK, but a lot of the times this guy is going to sling it. Uh, he he t- tossed the ball 44 times yesterday. I think that might be also something worthy of writing down and making note of against the Patriots overall. Completion props. This is a team that's going to prevent getting burnt deep. They're going to prevent giving up the big play, but they're going to let you kind of have these 10 and 15-yard plays. Um, so that's kind of all I really noticed there. And of course, the Patriots... Uh, is Ramondre Stevenson going to be a big touchdown guy 80% of the time? Is he going to be, if they get two touchdowns in a game, is he going to get one of them every single game? It might be the case. Uh, he He's a guy that fantasy owners were, were hesitant to draft because he's on the Patriots. But whenever they do something, it's probably going to be involving him. I'm kicking myself for not drafting Ramondre Stevenson because I thought the same thing. I was like, 
ah, they're not going to be great, a great offensive team, but they're going to do something. And it's, you know, he's got to be the guy that's going to get, you know, just usage rate. And then I, I didn't have any, I don't have any Ron J. Stevenson stock. So um, that was kind of a bummer. Uh, the Jaguars. I mean, I, Andrew, I've followed them a lot because they're in our division and mm-hmm. it just feels like Trevor Lawrence always just doesn't, isn't quite living up to expectations. Like every time he plays us, I'm like, oh man, they're going to, he's going to throw for 350. Our secondary is terrible. And then he throws for like 215 yards and a touchdown. And I, I, I think that's where it's got to go. You, when you hold the Browns 18 points and you don't win the game at home, you, you got to start asking a lot of questions of what's going on on the offense. So I'm glad that he said that, <laughs> said that, you know, we suck and mm. we got to change something. So you could, we could be in line for, you know, some big time changes there. Um, it just, it's a Jaguars team that they're just like on, they're an on paper team, like on paper, they look like they should be good. And they get on the field and you're just like, eh, you're, yeah. you're, you're okay. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. But Trevor Lawrence is just, I'm, I'm, I, I know a lot of people are out on Trevor Lawrence. I, I still, whenever I watch him, I'm just like, he's gotta be better than this. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not, maybe it's just. Who he is, but yeah, thirteen points at home is 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 pretty rough. So I'm not sure which receiver it was, Andy, but he this there was a receiver in the locker room that pretty much just said like, I don't care about that big play we had. We have to be able to hold on to the ball. Yeah, and it's just so true. So I'm not sure how we can utilize that. Maybe we start looking at potentially receptions over yards with guys, or we look at guys that catch the ball over the top and not the guys that are catching the ball out wide. Uh, I'm not sure how we utilize that in the props for for this coming week and moving forward, but. Um, I want to see them establish the possession a lot more. I want to see them having go from 20 to 20, you know, and kind of not just have to rely on a big play. So we'll see how that, uh, that works out moving forward. Yeah. My last regretful play is not taking the under on Deandre Hopkins. It was 31 and a half. This guy's so hurt. Uh, one catch for nine yards they're, 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 Surely they're going to have to shut him down. He, he is at half speed. He cannot get any separation. He cannot get open. Um, and then uh good friend, Jim, who is big time Jets fan. He told me before offseason, he said, draft Braylon Allen in every single one of your leagues in your last round. He said, you're going to want to have Braylon Allen on your team, the backup uh, to Brees Hall. And and after after yesterday, you got to wonder if Brees Hall and Braylon Allen are startable um, and what some of these numbers are going to be. They were Jets were super high on him in the preseason, and he looked great. And it's, it's pretty interesting. Aaron Rodgers had 18 completions, and nine of them went to Brees Hall and Braylon Allen. Uh, the, the the running backs. So um, he had a great game, which means Aaron Rodgers is going to trust him moving forward. So Braylon Allen is, is someone kind of interesting, um, you know, to, uh, to do. I, like if you don't have him in your fantasy football leagues, pick him up. He's probably the cat's out of the bag now. Cause he scored twice. Um, but yeah, if you have Brees Hall in your team and you have a really high waiver wire pickup, like absolutely go get him. I have Reese Hall in the league and I, I made sure to get Braylon Allen uh, like, like yesterday. Of course, Jim was like, did you start Braylon Allen? I was like, why would I have started Braylon Allen? Well, that's like, the biggest problem with fantasy, don't, right? Don't, is that don't, you, don't you, you give me nonsense. Exactly for not though. Starting Braylon Allen. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so. It's a gamble, man. Like sometimes you just like have to, because like you said, there you have, like, let's say you're two other running backs in your team. You're wondering to yourself, what would it take for me not to start these two guys? And it's really a gamble. Like you got this guy on your bench that's projected for five points, but he could also be the day, the day he gets you 15. But you either look like a genius or an absolute fool if you take away one of your starting running backs for True. this guy that gets five yards for you, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us on uh, Props and Parley's Day. Thanks so much for joining us. Remember, the word of the day is blitz in honor of Caleb Williams and the Bears not being able to stop one blitz. Yeah, uh, last night. Uh, so just type that in the comment section. Uh, we always love hearing from you guys. Tell us who you like for tonight. Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Get all of our breakdown videos for NFL, college. We still got MLB going on, so we've got plenty of content that is up there. And Andrew, tell them one more time what you have up for tonight at Wager Talk. 5% prop play uh, tonight, guys. Falcons and Eagles game gave out, gave out a, a bunch of free plays, both Andy and I here today on this game. But my favorite play is up at Wager Talk for 35 bucks. Forget about the one play, though. Get three days for $39. Promo code AM39. AM39. Three days, all plays for $39.
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great time to cash in on Monday Night Football. All right, good luck on all your plays tonight, everyone. Let's make sure we're practicing good bankroll management. And we will see everyone next time on Props and Parlays today.